Hey, welcome to Crafting the Wild with Analia, the Hyrule housewife. Do you also wish you could be out hunting for treasure, but you have kids at home and it just doesn't feel responsible? Well, instead, you can craft with us. Today, we're gonna make these cute little Korok pots. You can keep them up in your house or put them in the garden. And they even have a spot for a little guy to hide inside. And it's not necessary to shoot it to get him out. So you don't have to make new ones all the time. You can keep these forever. So join us instead of wandering the fields of Hyrule, avoiding the goblins. Okay, we're gonna start our Korok pots. And it starts out with this potpourri scent dish pot thing uh, which is about the shape I wanted and you can get them at the Dollar Tree for a dollar or these tiny ones I got at Walmart <clears throat> also a dollar and at first I tried painting these right on the original coat but it didn't want to dry and stick so I ended up using this bonding primer from Rust-Oleum. Not only does it stop rust, it bonds to any surface. So we could get our paint to stick to these. And I'm using also these little apple barrel paints. You can get these at probably any craft store. You can get them at Walmart. I'm mainly using the Territorial Beige and the Brown Oxide. This is for the dark part, this is for the lid and the light part. And I started with the light mocha, but it was kind of like fleshy colored so I ended up thinking it was too light and um, I think I kept it for the inside of my pot because I figured I didn't really care what color that was. So spray these first and let them dry for a little bit so that the paint will stick to them and then I'm starting off by painting the inside and then the bottom of the pot. So. That's a great noise. Just squirting some on whatever old plate you have. I got these plates for my kids, these divided plates, and they hate them for some reason. So, and they don't stack very well. So I use it for a painting plate. So I've got these sponge brushes. They can kind of squish into any space you need them to. You just press a little harder. Get a coat on all the inside there. Now I found that even with the primer, these really need two coats before they're done. Unless so, unless you get are lucky and you find a nice brown colored pot of these, that'd be fantastic. Or I guess instead of the bonding primer, you could get a spray paint that was the color you actually wanted that has a built-in primer and then I could skip all this but with this paint it needs to dry for an hour before you can put on a second coat or it will start to take off the first coat so i've got a couple that are already started so that i can show you the next step but we'll go ahead and do these first two steps on this one okay that one's not opened Got these. So we'll use our other sponge brush to do the outside part. And I mean, uh, the swirl pattern kind of goes up halfway where it meets halfway in the middle, right? So your lighter color needs to go up about into the dots so that you can put that swirl in there because I just painted over it for the swirl part. So now we got the territorial beige that we're putting on. It's gonna Give us our base thing. Okay, and I also did this territorial beige on the lid, the top, because I wanted it to have like a curved lid, like a little acorn pot, and that doesn't look exactly like an acorn. 
I wanted it to be acorn-esque. So this looks a little messy because it streaks a little because it's just the first coat. But by the time you get the second coat on, it looks great. So then we set that aside and let that start drying. We can start our next part, which is to make our lid for our thing. So I use these little water catcher things for pots, but they look very cute on these. And they're about the right size. Like I found that like uh, another thing that would be good would be like a teacup saucer, but I didn't want to ruin any of those. I felt too guilty painting them. So instead I got these, they're very cheap. I think also like a dollar in the garden section. You can get them at Home Depot or Walmart, just about anywhere. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add the little top thing. And for that, I use these little wooden knobs. They're unfinished, so they don't need to be primed. And they're, I think these were a dollar or two for a pack. And for these, I used, I've used a couple different things. I've used super glue or this other brand. It really doesn't matter what kind you use. You could probably also use a glue gun too, but I kind of really want to make sure that it's stuck and did not come off. So I put that on. Book. And then you gotta leave it some time so that it can like bond. So this is a lot of doing stuff and setting it aside for later <laughs> while you do the next, the next step, which is, you know, another good reason to do several of them, right? So I do have this other one that I did a while ago and see this one's all bonded and it's sticking on really firmly. I figure I could hang it up by this if I wanted to. I was also thinking it would be really easy to run a string through these little holes if you wanted to mount it with that depending on where you want to put it. Okay, so this one's already dry, so we can go ahead and get the first coat on him. This is also with the territorial beige. That way you have a little contrast once this is glued on the top from this darker top color, the brown oxide. I also like these knobs because even though they're not just like a little acorn top thing, I thought it would be nice to have a knob kind of thing so you could also put a string around that if you didn't want to run it through the holes, depending on how you want to hang it, right? Because some of them need to be hanging from a tree by a chain, we all know. Some of them need to be in a hole in a tree. So I want to want to have lots of options. So we kind of smush that into all the little edges. And you don't have to paint the underside, but I probably did just because sometimes, you know, I can't let it go. I've got to paint all the things, all the parts of all the things. So you do that top coat and then let that kind of dry. Now it says on the thing that let the paint dry for an hour before you do another coat. I'm not sure if an hour is strictly necessary, but definitely does need to dry for a while. If you don't wait long enough and you go to paint on another coat, it's just the first coat's going to come off and it's not very helpful. Okay, so this one, I painted the inside and painted the bottom coat. 
And then I'm going to the next thing I'm going to do is draw my little swirls. So I can see how, look at this guy, see how I kind of want them. So I, I did more than one because I wanted them to, to be able to turn it like any direction and still have a swirl there. So I just kind of freehand, what does a swirl look like? It looks like this. <laughs> if you wanted to print like a picture up from the internet to help you, some people are more comfortable with that, but really it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be these little interlocking, interlocking waves, it's kind of like a wave pattern. All right, so that one's got about three. Hopefully they're not too funky. And then I know where I want to paint with my dark brown paint. Okay. So with the dark brown paint, because you're doing something a little more detailed, it's good to have a smaller brush, whatever you have around. This one doesn't really have a round end, which would have been nice got this straight end but it'll work just take it slow with those detail edges so this one is the brown oxide from apple apple barrel so I'm gonna start with the little swirlies the edges and this will also need a second coat because it'll need to dry. It won't be dark enough without it. We don't want to see the little pencil marks and stuff. That's dumb. Koroks don't even use pencils. So just get the edges of it with your smaller brush. And then you can use the sponge brush to do the top. So there's our first little wave. Let's go and cover up those pencils, pencil marks. Okay. I can see I was trying out these colors on this one earlier. So it's like Originally, I'd wanted this lighter, this one to be the dark color and that to be the light color, but I just wasn't very happy with it. Oh, wait. Get my second swirl. See if that looks corrugy enough. Okay. All right. And then, oh, man, I didn't quite get my dark high enough, so I'll bring that down so that it covers that lighter paint color that I didn't like. most of the edges and I think I've got one more little thing to do on this side ah just stuck my hand in the paint but it's okay it's just the first coat it'll be fine okay I'm gonna set it down and hold it here so I don't stick my hands in the paint again Follow this little swirl and up and around. And get 
this first one and I left like just a little teeny bit of a swirl right there like look there was another one but then this Korok ate a hole in it so now it's just like a little dot where it would be a swirl And the last one. Okay. I'm gonna get the sponge brush and then we can fill in the rest of it much more haphazardly. It looks darker when you do it. Oh, you know what? My colors are probably mixing because I was using this for something else. Well, we'll see how it goes. It's the first coat. It might be okay. It looks a little, a little more latte-y. We'll see how it goes. Ah, so much drips. I guess I was one sponge brush short. I'm sure I have one uh, somewhere. Okay. I'm just kind of, kind of carefully do the edges, this part. So the lighter part doesn't show. I'm gonna squeeze in here. are gonna after this dries we're gonna do our leaves well after this dries we're gonna do a second coat exactly like it and it's gonna be beautiful so we'll come back then okay now we're all done with painting our pots I've taken them outside and given them a good spray with a clear matte sealer just to try to make sure none of that paint gets rubbed off or if they get wet um, you can actually use a gloss too. I accidentally used the gloss on this lid and I liked the gloss as well. So whichever you want. I thought the matte might look a little more natural, but the gloss is nice as well. So we have all these sprayed as well. Just be careful when you spray them not to accidentally grab your primer and spray them, which I may have done once because then you have to repaint your pot and it's sad. Okay, so for the next step, you could use hot glue for this. I might hot glue some of the leaves on, but for gluing the pot lid on, I'm going to try and use some um, super glue. I bought this, this brand because it was a little bit less expensive, but whatever you get is probably fine. Okay. So when I did mine, I glued the leaves on first and then I glued the lid to the leaves. And in retrospect, that was probably pretty dumb. So I'm gonna just put the glue on the top of the potpourri pot. And then I will stick the lid to that. And then we'll put the leaves on later. That's more artistic then doesn't need to be probably glued on there so well. That way they won't get in the way. Stick the pot on, and then I'm gonna set that one aside to, to dry and do the next one. Cause I'm gonna, I figured if I was gonna make them, I might not make a whole bunch, right? If one if one Korok pot is fun, then six is six times the fun and not much more hassle. So stick that one on. And I think I'm just about out of glue in this one. We'll grab a new tube. Got my assortment of super glues. Pop this one open. 
one thing I like about that I've liked about this one is you know sometimes when you have super glue once you open it it's unusable if you don't use it all right then these don't seem too bad and even if they had been like that the pack came with several in it so I figured it would be fine but it hasn't really been any problem okay so we're using the same size lid for these little ones but I think it still looks pretty cute Lots of glue. Let's take that one, and then I've got one, one more to glue, and we can start doing the leaves. Yay! So cute. Okay, so after you put the little lids on, it's really good if you can just kind of walk away and let them cure for an hour. And once, once they've done that, then they're on there super securely and they're not going to come off. If you mess with them before then, even just to put your leaves on, uh, you might have to re-glue your lid on. So you can see here, the leaves that I glued in before I put the pot on, that's a little bit cuter because they're just like really well in the edges. These ones, they look a lot more glued on. So it depends, you know, how much suspension of belief do you want? You want them to be where they just look okay sitting up in a tree or do you want them to also look, you know, beautiful from every angle? So it's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Um, these ones. So Mr. Glue Gun is off in the corner there because what I did discover is if you put the glue on there, if it gets pulled away for any reason, it's going to pull the paint off of your pot. And that's just, then you have to add some more paint and spray it again. So I am just over the glue gun for this. I just am going to use the super glue for the rest of them. So I wanted to do one of these smaller pots so we could see how well we could kind of like fit these in there. And I think I want to cut these a little more curved, the leaves, so that I can kind of work them into the edge a little better. They're not going to be perfect, but I just think that way they'll be a little cuter. All right, I'm just gonna use the super glue for that because this stuff has been pretty amazing. Just stick it on there. <clears throat> oh, see, that works pretty slick. Can kind of get that in there. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. That looks really nice. Okay, and see now that that lid's on, no problem. So I'm gonna kind of alternate the big ones with the small leaves. To get some variety. Cute. All right, cut a lot of these so I could have them just, you know, ready to go. As I was doing my project. Yeah, it actually works really well with the smaller ones having a little more space. I thought it might look weird with the bigger lid. The smaller lids were kind of too small. These six inch lids. Six? I think they're six. They're just about perfect. Oh man, that's fun. Okay, I'm starting to run out of the little teeny leaves. I might actually have to go get another branch of fake eucalyptus from Walmart. 
That's what I do. I go pick up milk and fake eucalyptus and pot lids. That's my grocery list. Okay, kind of don't want that where I can see it. Do I have another small one or? Nope, that's just a, like a bum end of a leaf. I guess I will have just another kind of big one. I think I'm gonna cut him kind of shorter. I don't want him to hang down quite that much. So he's not a small leaf, but we're just gonna make him a little smaller. So he'll have the same effect as if he were. Well, this one I would, I'm gonna call that one out. I'm glad that came in a big multi-pack because I've been using a lot of it. Okay, spread a little over there because I know it's gonna overlap. Is that pretty good? Let's smoosh it in. All right. How cute. All right, now I'm just gonna do the rest of them till we have a big collection of these little guys. Thanks for joining us in Crafting the Wild. We hope you like this project as much as we did. If there's something you'd like us to make in the future, leave a comment in the comments section. Be sure to hit like on your Sheikah slate and give us a rumble. We'll see you next week.